you're in the British Army. You all work as a team and you try and stick as a team. Then there was a conversation between the multiple and Lieutenant Rogers, and he wanted to try and protect us and himself from anyone finding out about the treatment, you know, the way that we treated him. So his suggestion was that all the blame be put on Corporal Payne. And that's the only reason I can think of why things changed so dramatically. Mr Rogers did not want anybody finding out about the way that we treated the detainees. The British Army were doing peacekeeping duties in Basra. There had been the killing of the Royal Military Police officers in Basra just before they raided a hotel. They were all rather hyped up and they arrested a number of people in the hotel. Baha Musa was picked up. They took them back to their main camp and held them in custody for 48 hours, which they shouldn't have done. They should have actually passed them up the line to the holding facility at Umm Qasar. During the time they held them in the main camp, they actually put them in stress positions and they kept them hooded for 36 of the 48 hours and they seem to have beaten them up. And there is some video evidence of this and the inquiry is into the death of Baha Musa, who died whilst he was held in custody after about 36 hours. Did you use any force upon him other than that which you used to take him to the ground and hold his arms together? I had my knee in his butt. Why did you have your knee in his back? To control him. Uh, in the thrashing about, do you say that any part of his body struck anything or anybody? I heard his head, but I don't know whether it was the floor or the wall. What, did you hear his head? I heard it whack. What sort of a noise was it? Like a whack. The final moments of Bahamusa's life appears to have been moments where Donald Payne, at least, completely lost all self-control. I'm the sister who's acted for his father, Colonel Musa, and the two boys. We went to the House of Lords in June 2007, and effectively we won and forced this inquiry. The state, of course, had no intention whatsoever of establishing this inquiry, so we forced them to do that, and we're presently awaiting a grand chamber judgment from the European Court of Human Rights, which concerns many Iraqis, including Colonel Musa Baha Musa's father, because we say that jurisdiction for the purpose of the European Convention began at the hotel when Baha Musa was deprived of his liberty. I've written a number of what we call tribunal plays with Nick Kent at the Tricycle Theatre. Public inquiry has gone for a very long time. They're not really covered properly or regularly at all in the conventional media, but they're important. And uh, the best way to, I say, one of the best ways to describe them and explain the significance of all this was in, 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 a, in a play or so they can be performed for a couple of hours in the theatre. What I want you to do, please, uh, to assist the inquiry, is to tell us what you remember about the incident that involved Baha Musa. Cooper was a private in the army. He's now left the army. He was um, court-martialed, but the court-martial was abandoned through lack of evidence. But he was with Corporal Payne when they held down Baha Musa and when Baha Musa finally collapsed through his injuries and the beatings he'd received over the past 36 hours. What, what did you see going on in that room? I seen Corporal Payne struggling with Baha Musa. Baha Musa wasn't wearing his hood, his plasticos were off. Obviously there was a struggle between the pair Just of them. Just pause. In what position was Baha Musa? Baha Musa was stood up and Don Payne was to the rear of Baha Musa, trying to put his knee to the back of Baha Musa's legs. He was trying to get him to the ground. So Corporal Payne was behind and yes. what happened? Obviously, I assisted Corporal Payne in restraining Baha Musa. From that point, I can't remember if I had hold of his arms or his legs, but I had held a piece of his body you know, to stop him from moving about because he was wriggling everywhere. I mean, it was just to stop him from moving about to make it easier to get the plastic us back onto him. Uh, <clears throat> and he went to the ground, did he? Yes. Uh, to his knees or further? I think it will have been further, all the way to the floor. Flat, facing downwards? Yes. It was one attack too many and Bahamis stopped breathing and he couldn't be revived. Thereafter, a story was concocted which laid as much blame as possible on Donald Payne, who was literally left holding the body. And there was a cover-up so that nobody got um, to the heart of why it was that hooding and stressing 
and food and water deprivation, sleep deprivation came back as standard operating procedure and a whole range of other extremely troubling issues. I think it was part of the culture that was spreading and so generally people felt that they could behave towards detainees in a way that was completely against the Geneva Convention and the European Convention on Human Rights. What you said was, uh, can I remind you, I could see the prisoners were being worn down, they were knackered through lack of sleep and having been in the stress positions for a long time. Yes. That was very obvious to you, was it? Yes. Uh, and very obviously inhumane. Yes. Uh, was that a matter that troubled you? Yes. Did you take it up with anybody? Yes. Who with whom? The B. Gyro. Mr. Peebles? Yes. At what stage did you take it up? After the tactical questions have finished. Tell us what transpired. I was told they were wanted with the shock of capture still because they had intelligence to give. Uh, so it was an explicit order, was it, to maintain <clears throat> the stress positions? Yes. And hooding? Yes. Uh, and you say that came from Major Peebles? Yes. International law is very, very clear that uh, prisoners of war and civilians must not in any circumstances be subjected to inhumane treatment or moral or physical coercion. Now the problem that the British state had is there was a clash between the prohibition on coercion and the political imperative for an interrogation capability in Iraq. That's how it was put in the Bahamusa inquiry. This inquiry investigates these issues and it will be reporting this summer, probably at the same time as the play comes out, and I hope it will come to some robust conclusions so that we never again knowingly, as a policy, contravene the European Convention on Human Rights and the Geneva Conventions.